I love that though. I think that that's like, that's probably my favorite thing about doing this. It's that kind of like convincing people and showing them that it can be such an amazing industry to work in and that it's not, you know, boring and traditional and all the things that people think that it would be, you know, this kind of like rolling your eyes at working in the wedding industry, that it's not that at all. And there's so many amazing, creative, fun businesses that you can get involved with. The goal isn't to live forever. The goal is to create something that will. You're listening to Perspective, a podcast for wedding creatives, where we sit down often with a special guest and talk about our many years of experience in the wedding industry. We're about to call Gillian Curry and Ellie Kaim over at the Wedding Collective HQ to talk to them about what it's like to run a major wedding directory, blog, and what it's like creating some of the best wedding markets in Scotland. If you've ever wanted to learn about the early days of the Wedding Collective, as it used to be the Glasgow Collective, we'll definitely cover that. But we're also going to be talking to Jill about her journey with the Collective and what their plans are going forward. Of course, we're going to be taking a conversational dive into their blog and show you how you can stand out from a crowd when some missing features, as well as cover their approach to a wedding fair. This episode is going to be great on a number of levels. If you're someone who has never been on a wedding directory, doesn't know how to stand out in a tough market, or has never showcased work at a wedding fair, this episode is, of course, sponsored by With Jack. But I want to know what we're drinking today, Gregory. In the cinema office here, we are drinking some freehand coffee roasters. Our friend Ross uh, Toro gave us it. Hello, Ross. And thank it's you very much. an El Salvador Buena Vista. I didn't know what Buena Vista meant. I only knew of it from Buena Vista Social Club. Yeah, but me neither. Oh, sorry. I, I googled it, and my Spanish should have been better because it means nice view. So this coffee was growing with a nice view over oh, the Buena Vista, over the El Salvador nice. hills. <laughs> so, guys down in London, Gillian and Ellie, what are you guys drinking? Um, I'm drinking a glass of water <laughs> <laughs> because Lovely. I left Where's my coffee from? upstairs. It's actually from my Brita filter jug because the water down here is terrible. Hashtag not spawn. Yeah, hashtag ad. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ellie brought me a lovely coffee from the coffee shop around the corner and it's upstairs getting cold. So do you, well, do I you might want be to run back it. upstairs and get it? Well, I might be drinking it, guys. <laughs> Ooh, what, what are you drinking? Yeah, <laughs> I'm drinking um, tea, but with oat milk because um, I'm lactose intolerant, which is sad. So I won't be actually drinking your drink, Jill, because it's milk milk. So it's safe, I promise. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, I feel you with the milk. I, I'm more of a kind of alternative myself because it doesn't do too too good to me. No, and I feel like Pretty it's one of those perfect. London things. Like because I'm from Yorkshire, so obviously tea is an institution. So when I go home, yeah. my dad's like, "We've not got you that crap milk," and I'm like, "Well, it's uh, fine. Okay, fine." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Nick. <laughs> I feel like everyone has it though. Does anyone really drink milk anymore? Yeah, up north. Oh, really? No, I still tend, like, I just default to minor figures or old Yes, that's or what we've got in like the fridge. Days. I love yeah. the, the girl that's on the front oh, of yeah. the minor figures thing with her stupid little duck costume. I love it. I want to get it. <laughs> I want to get that tattooed. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> Halloween costume. Oh my God, you're like, I was the minor, that would be the most millennial, well, Gen Z Halloween outfit ever if I went as the minor <laughs> figures girl. <laughs> I think it's a great show. I feel like yeah. you would only get away with that costume in certain areas. Like, you come to Glasgow, maybe, like, Finiston, they'd know what you are, <laughs> but, like, anywhere else, I, I, I don't know. But then you'd get to be really pretentious the whole night and be like, oh. I'm the minor figures milk girl, you yeah. don't know? Oh. <laughs> That's actually true. That That is so true. <laughs> uh, yeah, so how are you this morning? Are you, you both well? Good. Yeah, good, thank you. Very good. Good. How are you? Good, good, good. We are very well. In fact, we were just before we had troubles with our audio, uh, Greg and I were um, reminiscing about that time that we saw you at Errol's Pizza Place. Mm. <laughs> so good. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Oh Ellie. my God. It's so I know, good. Yeah, yeah we, I remember that we well, guys. Yes, yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Shout out to Errol's Hot Pizza. Yeah, so mm. good. It is really good. It's getting some really good reviews. I saw that one is in the was it in the Herald. Yeah, it was. Oh. Yeah, I was reading that at the weekend. The guy was the so weekend. annoyed that he had to queue, right? <laughs> but worth yeah, it. Yeah, but when, once they got in there, it was worth it. Exactly. Yeah. He was like, "It's all worth it." Yeah, I mean, I get it. Who likes to queue? 
even though we're so yeah. good at it in this country or but it's like it just adds to the hype as well doesn't it it's like will you get in will you not get in was it a heartwarming story like ratatouille um kind of but with a bit more like sass and mm. journalistic and less rats. sass okay yeah less there are no rats at no, Errol's no pizza at Errol's. just to confirmed <laughs> yeah confirmed I, I meant more i meant more the aggie food critic side of it but that's that's a good yeah. disclaimer thanks guys yeah <laughs> it's good to know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So what have you guys been up to this weekend? This Anything weekend. Exciting? What have I been up to? We shot a wedding yesterday, so we did, that was weird, like a little oh, Monday right. wedding. Yeah. That's nice, though. Get a lot of these down in London. Just was little, it a like, small, small city centre wedding? Yeah, so it was just like 16 of them, and they got married at a nice registry office and then had a little dinner in a fancy restaurant. It was near Somerset House, so it was very like iconic London-looking. Which oh, was right. fun, but then there's all those mad protests going on. So, yeah, it was kind of it was kind of cool around that area. Loads of little weird stuff going on, which is quite fun. Um, but we cool. were in Brighton at the weekend because we're thinking we might maybe do a little house move. <gasps> this is a massive spoiler. You can't just put this down with <laughs> a fire. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Is it the, yeah. the wedding collective, the, the London wedding again. collective, the Hove wedding collective? We just don't know anymore, do we? No. Yeah, so we're looking <laughs> no. at the places. Maybe for a little move to the coast. We'll see. Mm-hmm. We'll see what happens. Are you going to give Ellie her own her own room? <laughs> oh. It was one of the requirements. I've asked to go on the visits with them, but they vetoed it for some reason. <laughs> <sighs> I know, selfish, really. I know. Mm-hmm. Sick. So why Brighton? Why not Brighton, Simon? I think because, well... We want to buy a house and we want to have lots of room. And I just think when you're working from home, you just need space and you need to be in like an area you like really enjoy living in. And mm-hmm. we just can't afford that in London. Like we love Peckham. Peckham is amazing, but it's just ridiculous house prices. So, and it's by yeah. the sea and oh, it's so like- easy to go into London from there as well. So mm-hmm. what did you guys do the weekend? Were you working? We weren't working, no. Uh, well, I I had a wee adventure with my wife. My my kids got looked after by... Uh, is this a PG podcast? <laughs> <laughs> not no. that sort of adventure. In, sure the, sh- in the show, no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> the story, on the other hand, I don't know. No, the story's fine. The story's fine. Yeah, so I don't know if you guys have ever explored Scotland, but um, <clears throat> fairly near my house, you've got... Uh, Loch Lomond and all the kind of Kildare and stuff. Uh, well, we went to visit the Devil's Pool Pit. Oh, um, cool! Which is uh, just really, really bloody cool. I'd never been there before, but um, apparently it's a very well used filming location for such films as well. I know Outlander was shot there. That's obviously a TV show. Uh, yeah. Pikachu Detective. What? What a favorite that is. I mean that. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you or did you not see Ryan Reynolds? Is my question. Look, I didn't. Okay, and that's the only reason I brought up Pikachu. Okay, because <laughs> I really would have loved to have met Ryan. Um, what is Ryan. the Devil's Pulpit for the less initiated among us? Okay, Amy. Sorry, it's basically. Oh God, this is where I have no idea. Waterfall, it's, isn't it? Like a waterfall it's, hole. Yeah, it's basically like a gorge type. That sounds better. Thing. <laughs> yeah. I liked waterfall hole. <laughs> <laughs> It's a waterfall hole. It's a waterfall hole. Um, That's what they call it. <laughs> Cute. Oh, it's lovely. It's lovely. It's been a very water-based yeah. podcast so far. <laughs> we had Britta, we had the Devil's Pulpit, we had the sea. Yeah. Give yeah. the other elements a chance, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a really popular right. shooting location, isn't it? Have you guys shot there before? I mean, I literally just said that. Oh, shit. Sorry, I'm not listening. <laughs> 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 Uh, no, so although funnily enough, there was uh, now I don't know what they were doing exactly. If they were, oh, why? Why does your head always go to the gutter, <laughs> Ellie? Because is... I've met you once, <laughs> <laughs> and you've had a few beers. That's, yeah, really, really that's, really that's fair. That's that's a fair comment. Um, yeah, so it was uh, two photographers and a couple. They didn't. She didn't look like she was a bride, but they were definitely doing a shoot of Ooh. some degree engagement session possibly I mean, possibly did you not recognize possibly. the photographers i didn't uh, they looked Ooh. italian oh. they looked uh, italian they looked italian right let's not maybe it was the pharos they're italian they was are. it they are. Yeah? it's it wasn't them, oh. it wasn't them. No. i mean no they they looked quite young um 
and okay, I didn't mean to be stereotypical. They actually spoke Italian. Well, that's okay. That's that's like a little scientific. Yeah, that's, like, that's yeah. backed up by fact. <laughs> um, okay, guys. So yes. for our listeners out there who maybe don't have any clue who you guys are as individuals, mm-hmm. Jill, we'll start with you. Yes. Who are you? Who are you? I'm. Do I have to say my full name? I'm Jillian Suzanne Lottie. Oh, I'm. Sorry. Uh, actually, Lottie Curry, you're right. We've just double hyphened. So I'm Jillian Suzanne Yay! Lottie Curry. <laughs> so it's no longer a business lie that I am the Currys because I actually am now. Um, mm. So I am a full time wedding photographer and a part time legend. Legend. <laughs> legend. No, part time um, operate another business called The Wedding Collective, which is. Mm-hmm. like an online directory and we do events and stuff so that's me uh, very cool very yeah. cool and obviously we've known you for a while very long yeah, we've we've worked with you yeah throughout the years mm-hmm. uh, to your to your dismay yes unfortunately <laughs> but we do make and some we... good stuff together so mm-hmm. we do it's worth it in the end guys oh yeah i mean i love that shot where it was just me yes um in, in your way i, mm-hmm. I love that shot mm-hmm. in the field you yeah. sent it to me the day after. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was great. Really, really nice. I can put it in my Simon Get Out of My Shot folder oh, that I've got yes. on my desktop. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm kidding. We love no, Nobody's ever got a Greg Get Out of My Shot folder. It's funny that, Greg, isn't it? That's because yeah. you're always being a creepy a creepy creep in a, in a bush or... God, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I guess it's just... It's one of those things, isn't it? I think when there's four of you... It's hard. It's hard when you're kind of working a wedding if there's four, two filmmakers, two photographers, because there's four corners in every room. So, you know, it's and going I mean, to happen. Chris takes up two of them with his big head. Exactly. Big <laughs> bum. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> and for all those people who don't know who Chris is, that's uh, Jill's partner, Chris. Yes. As in Chris yeah, Curry. yeah, yeah. Christopher Curry, that's the one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The other half. The other half. The other we half of the Curries. Which well, he actually funny. did, but we no. banished him. Yeah, we we didn't want him. <sighs> we yeah. wanted the wedding collective. I know, but I wanted him. I wanted him to have a a little bit of power here. We'll get him another we, time. We can we can say all you out, that we want about him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, he's going to be back in like five minutes with an egg sandwich. So. Oh man! Do you know egg sandwiches? I don't know. Should I text him and ask? Yeah. What is, also? What's an egg sandwich? Fried egg in a sandwich. What? Not yeah. <laughs> of course it is. Like a, in a roll with butter and. Uh, ketchup no. or brown sauce. Right. Have you never had one of these, Ellie? No, I didn't, no, didn't even know this is a thing. I'm a Very, fan of putting random shit in sandwiches, but I've never had a fried egg sandwich. It's because it's I from mean, that it's, wee I cafe mean, up the road and they have like one of those menus that's like... Here's egg, everything we have in the kitchen. Egg in a roll. <laughs> egg and bacon in a roll. Sausage in a roll. Wait a minute, Ellie. You're a fan of putting weird shit in sandwiches, yet egg is like a staple sandwich filling. It's not weird enough, about? obviously. I wouldn't say it was a staple sandwich filling. Well, like egg mayo, but I don't like egg mayo, so I've, uh, maybe nah. that's just put me off the egg. Maybe I've just blinkeredly gone May- through life refusing to look at egg sandwiches because I've always assumed egg mayo, and actually it was actual egg Oh, fried egg. egg. Fried egg sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've learned yeah. something new already. Thanks, pals. Mm-hmm. I'll text Chris just now. Don't well, worry. More importantly than what an egg sandwich is, yeah. who is Ellie? Oh, yeah. Um, I have... I mean, the, the most important thing you need to know about me is that I've never heard of an egg sandwich. Um, other than that, <laughs> yes. um, I run a creative consultancy called The Wedding Enthusiast. So I do wedding planning for couples and also um, creative consultancy for businesses in the wedding industry. Um, I've just set up, well, I say just, it was like May last year, but set up a um, side business called The Enthusiast. Where I'm encouraging everyone to be um, super enthusiastic. Um, and despite how I can't manage full sentences on this podcast, I also host uh, co-host another podcast. So <laughs> that's me. <laughs> Which you actually don't like to do. Yes. Well, I love talking <laughs> to people. I love the opportunity to learn. But I, mm-hmm. I just think I, I don't know if you guys get this, but I just think podcasts are so intrusive. <laughs> like I just the idea of people <laughs> listening in their house, and I realise they're choosing to do it. I'm not like forcing it upon them, but the idea of people listening to my voice in their ears in their house really stresses me out. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, let's go on to talking about The Collective. Yes. Jill, you and Chris, obviously, were photographers first. We were. uh, Before The Collective was a thing. So was it just like a side hustle that grew 
into more like yeah how, how did the idea of the collective come about so basically um 2011 imagine the scene scotland it was kind of a bit pre pinterest pre instagram so mm-hmm. it was really hard for people to find um businesses that were doing stuff that was different and i think mm-hmm. when we kind of started our business obviously we didn't want to be in with the kind of traditional scottish weddings like we wanted to be marketing ourselves differently and there wasn't really an avenue to do it but then also at the same time we were meeting loads of great wee businesses that didn't Mm -hmm. really have a way to reach out to clients or to connect with each other so it kind of just happened locally just like kind of meeting people and bringing people together and then i guess it kind of just grew from there but it's been ages it's been so long since we've been doing it yeah. Um, when you say that like pre Pinterest, pre Instagram, yeah. you're right. Because I remember at that time being like, Oh, I think I think we need to go into Twitter. Twitter's where yeah. people were networking <laughs> oh and yeah. doing social media. Yeah, totally. So and it was really a couple hard. Of years later I was like, No. <laughs> yeah, it's so much easier now, I think, to connect with and to find people who share like a similar aesthetic to you or you know, that it would be good to network with because like you have similar clients, but yeah. Back then, it was like still quite old school. I mean, yeah. it was only, what, eight years ago. But it was really hard to find, I think, you know, like florists or venues that you loved. And it was so exciting mm-hmm. when you did work with someone or work at a wedding that was like really 100% your vibe. So you just kind of wanted to keep that keep that going and like meeting those kind of people. So, mm-hmm. And there was definitely yeah. less suppliers out there who were offering something kind of different. Oh, definitely. So yeah. It was, I yeah, think there was like hard. 10 of us in Scotland or something like, just all yeah. hanging out. No, not really. <laughs> um, it felt like it though. I think it did. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was hard to find people, wasn't it? And obviously like you sort of handpicked the first group of people and mm-hmm. curated that list for the first yeah. iteration of the Glasgow Wedding Collective. Yeah, totally. What sort of image were you trying to represent with that? group of people that I don't think it gathered it wasn't even a sense of being like that you know curated or at the time like when we started that obviously we didn't know that we were then going to grow it into this kind of bigger thing so I think it was more like it was just when we were meeting people and I think it was that like genuine connection with people meeting people and know that you would 100% you know represent these people to your clients and recommend them and say they were amazing and just other people that you kind of respected or were doing something that was different so it wasn't like we curated this group of like oh these are like your ideal suppliers all make these one wonderful weddings it was just actually meeting people that were really cool and kind of making this little core and then I guess as we grew that's when we started to have to try and bring in people that did different things and make sure that every member brought something different um to the directory and like the business i guess so, so obviously you, you mentioned bringing people in mm-hmm. who had what role then like who, who like who did what at the beginning there was obviously yourself and chris oh me i do everything <laughs> yeah, <there you> go. <laughs> oh right okay okay no so at the beginning it was just me and chris that kind of started it and then mm-hmm. we kind of moved to chris to take over more of running curry stuff and then we had claire come on board he used to be be eventful and did the wedding planning uh, side through that so she kind of was really instrumental in us growing it and finding other people and yeah and now she's gone to Errol's Hot Pizza Land but it's fine because we have mm. Ellie and Ellie's amazing too so yeah. oh, thanks but Yay! I can't make pizza <laughs> <laughs> I mean next time you come into Glasgow we'll totally take you out to Errol's Hot Pizza and then you can actually just have a better sense of what it is I, yeah. that, is, that is top of my list. Like, I didn't even make it to Kelvin Grove last time, but ahead of my list, like, I'm not going to go to Kelvin Grove. I'm just going to go to Errol's and sit there for five hours, I think. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's about fun. right. I mean, <laughs> uh, you, you have to queue, but still. So I heard. So I heard. But no rats. So all fine. Mm. All good. Mm, mm. Yeah. Who, who wants to go to a park when there's so many good restaurants here? That is literally my London life. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> talking about the business of the wedding collective mm-hmm. when when did you sort of realize that this isn't just a side project it's becoming a business and how did you go about sort of starting that i guess i don't know it's kind of funny because when it started it genuinely was just for it wasn't like a money oriented thing or like a side hustle really it was just something that 
I find it really hard like if I see like there's a gap for something to not just do it like I just wanted yeah. to you know make it happen and really enjoyed it and then I guess when it became profitable I was like oh this is nice and now we can start like investing and in getting like a lovely website and a lot like maybe five years of it was just putting money back into the business to make it better which is amazing and it just kind of grew and then became this thing that people wanted to be involved in which I think is maybe mm -hmm. why it's kind of lasted so long and why we have such a great group of people is because it didn't really come from a place of profit it's always been about who's involved and like how good it is for other people's businesses and how much fun it was to do was why it kind of all started so we've kind of always tried to keep that momentum going of it being really organic and kind of friendly feeling and so I guess that kind of naturally leads into it being profitable I guess because it, yeah it never really was about money which if it had been we could have just like filled the directory with loads of people and it mm -hmm. would have just been not really very specialized and not really useful to anyone so uh -huh. I guess that's maybe what's made it as good as it is today that it's always kind of been right the people being one of the first suppliers on the collective mm -hmm. there was definitely something special about it yeah um well i'm trying to think can you remember who the original ogs are like <laughs> like who who those first suppliers were yeah of course we've got lots of people that have been with us for years and years and years and people that we're still really like good friends with and do you want me to name names you guys yeah um yeah it's all the kind of people that were in glasgow that we've been with forever like marcel bracken lisa spiron rose carol weiss alison mcleod Eileen Sugare, you know, there's so many people in venues mm -hmm. like that have been with us for ages, which mm -hmm. is amazing. And then it creates such a core little group of people that support each other. Which yeah, I love I think that that's part of it. One of the best parts of it is that having been part of it since the start, yeah, you definitely feel like there's a community there. Mm -hmm. um, I hope other people who are joining more recently feel yeah. that as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. I mm -hmm. think that um, it's such an important part of it as well that that feels really genuine, you know, and it's kind of people that really would help you out if you were stuck with something or, you know, it's like an actual really genuine because people know each other and they, they know each other's businesses and you want everyone to mm -hmm. do really well and you all want to work on these amazing weddings together. So not, not just to mention that you've had a big impact on our lives being part of the collective, but Aww. you... Thanks, Simon. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sappy and today i'm sorry uh but you've also like our our friends of ours uh something brewed mm -hmm. they actually came to a wedding show as a favor for us uh one yeah. time when we were in the glue factory yeah that's right and they started their business from that experience so yeah the wedding collective was so special that it kind of rubbed off on them and they started selling coffee at weddings so you're changing people's lives it's insane <laughs> I'm doubly nice today. I love that though. I think that that's like, that's such, that's probably my favorite thing about doing this is, mm -hmm. you know, it's that kind of like convincing people and showing them that it can be such an amazing industry to work in and that it's not, you know, boring and traditional and all the things that people think that it would be, you know, this kind of like rolling your eyes at working in the wedding industry, that it's not that at all. And there's so many amazing, creative, fun businesses that you can get involved with and stuff. And like, yeah. I love that to be able to say to them, like, this is an amazing idea. You should be doing this at weddings. And then it to work yeah. out is like so exciting for them. I love yeah. that. Yeah. It can't all be good stuff though. So what was the hardest part of starting it? And then also Ooh. what's the hardest part of running it day to day? I think the Other hardest- Other than talking to us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to deal with you guys all the time. <laughs> <laughs> the real spawn on our side, guys. What can we say? <laughs> um, I think the hardest part of starting it was- that obviously we were, you know, making a curation or there was had to be a way to kind of make a selection of businesses. And that and that did really come from a place of just getting who we met. And, you know, it was a really kind of natural thing to be working in the industry. Um, but it became really hard to say no to people, I guess. That's been yeah. one of the hardest things. And I kind of wish a little bit that we had separated it from the curries more maybe made it a little bit more anonymous because it kind of made it hard for us as like our two businesses to network if you know there was some businesses that we weren't able to welcome on the collective but then we were still working with as the curries that kind of made it a little bit hard um 
and like that still happens today as well you know like it's mm. it's really hard to say no to people um, and sometimes it is hard because it's like it's it's not you know like it's not that their work isn't good enough it's just that it doesn't fit with the particular curation of people we've got at the moment and we never want to yeah, totally. too much yeah. mm. but a lot of the time um you can't you know obviously if you're if you're a business who's applied and it is a no you, you do take it personally but we hate that that's how you know obviously we're flattered that people think we are a, a great thing for their business because that's <clears throat> the whole point of our business but um it is really hard to know that people are getting that email and then you know feeling crushed and actually their business is great it's just not right for us at the time like that's still a really hard thing to tussle with especially because as jill said before like the collective wasn't born from profit so we really do care about the industry and the people in it and helping people so that's really it's really tough guys yeah. <laughs> it's hard to say no and like you said so much of the time it's like you know especially with a category like photographers for example like it's a really popular category and mm. we need to support the businesses that are already members you know and make sure that everyone offers something different you know so that it's really the existing members are getting the full benefit of being members and there are so many amazing businesses and there's no way you know that we can have them all on board so yeah that's definitely one of the toughest things is having to say no to really incredible businesses yeah, yeah. We, I can sort of relate to that on a level where when we get an inquiry where the couple haven't booked a photographer yet, yeah, we're like, oh man, there's so many good ones that are friends that have referred us in the past. Yeah. It's like, I can't list down 20 for them. I need to give them maybe three, four yeah. at most. Mm. Exactly. And it's like, oh, it's so hard to do. <laughs> yeah. And that's when you have to like... You have to look at like what kind of wedding they're having, yeah. like who their other suppliers are. Do we think that this photographer is going to fit well with, the, the, you know, this group that they've selected? Yeah. So exactly. on a very small yeah. scale, we can almost relate with you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's got to be a good fit. That's the thing, doesn't it? It's got to be what's best for the couple and what's going to like really work for them. So, yeah, that's probably one of the the hardest things. Ellie, yeah. do you have any unique challenges that you have to face that Jill doesn't? Because you're kind of the newest head in the business <laughs> um well i think because it's such a close-knit um community which is one of the great things about joining it as a because i'm also on it as a supplier um mm. and it's great because you get such good support in like the facebook group the markets the nights out like it's, it's a really nice community to be a part of but coming into something that's been established for eight years and not knowing anyone's backstory not knowing who knows who not knowing you know like anything was like a, a massive baptism of fire because i would just like <laughs> like jill loves this story where i was talking about the jeweler um alison mcleod um yep, yep. and i was pronouncing her name as alison mcleod for ages oh my god that <laughs> was the best <laughs> jill likes to remind me about it weekly and then the first thing she did when i met alison was like oh my god alison like ellie tell her the story and i was like great hi i i'm the email woman um i can't pronounce names um so that was really um like it's super exciting of uh, like i love meeting new people but that's really hard is not knowing who knows who and what people have you know what's gone before and stuff and also um not that this is a problem that jill doesn't face but keeping like this our suppliers are putting out so much good stuff that sometimes only scheduling two posts a day on social media is really hard because everyone's just doing really great stuff and i'm like i want to show people that i want to show people that oh my god i want to show people that so that's hard but that's just because i'm an enthusiastic and erratic personality so you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah Actually, well, my own problem. <laughs> personality wise you definitely fit in so oh, you seem to be doing a really really good job I mean, I'm trying, so that's good to know. Thanks, pals. <laughs> You're definitely enthusiastic. It, it, uh, I'm, yeah, on brand. Another thing sorry. as well, speaking of, um, I, I love it. Uh, another thing as well was filling Claire's boots because Claire's got no, such, had such a, well, I say had like she's dead, she's alive, she's just doing pizza. Um, she <laughs> she's, has, doing pizza. she's just doing, she's pizzering. Um, yeah. She has such an incredible tone of voice and she has such a great rapport with everyone that mm. that, is, that was also tough because, like I needed to do Claire's job as well as Claire was doing it whilst trying to embody all the brilliant things she brought, but not trying to copy her. Like we updated the website the other day. And so we took out Claire's profile and put mine in instead. But Claire's is just so good. I was like, can't we just change the name to me? And she was like, no. So I've immortalized <laughs> Claire's old profile on my notes just to like in homage to everything she's done. <laughs> Sometimes I just stare at it and just wish she was back. <laughs> Because there was a bit of crossover, so I worked with her for a bit, mm. like learn the ropes and stuff. So oh, yeah, so I was I was going to ask, like, did she show you how to do things, or like how, how much of that was passed down? Yeah, so it was just like hard graft. We had like a whole plan for it. It was called the Baton Pass. 
Oh, yeah, it was. Aww. <laughs> Aww. Um, yeah, so obviously, so I come and do um, work with Jill and Chris in situ um, most of the time, apart from when they're swanning off to like Antigua and places like that, you know. Um, <laughs> so I obviously work with Jill and Chris really closely, but because Claire's based um, in Scotland, she came down a couple of times. And so we kind of did um, bits like that. But it's one of those things where it's quite a reactionary job. So like, I wouldn't know how to deal with stuff until emails came in. I didn't know how to handle and I'd have to message her. And she was like, you know, had a massive dog and a child in one hand and spinning a pizza in the other. And she was like, so this is what I do. And I was like, Oh yeah. Okay. Um, (laughs) so yeah, so there was a period of a period of transition, but, um, Mm -hmm. it's all like, you know, we've got a CRM system, we've got like a image collection thing. So a lot of it is automated up to a certain point. Um, so that bit was easy enough, but then because we're dealing with real people and real problems, there's always bits that you need to kind of just, learn on 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 the job i guess and uh, you know what i should say about the homage to claire glasgow has even got a, an homage to claire it actually does her, yeah. her, she's an her actual face, legend <laughs> her, her face is graffitied onto oh i don't even know the building on or the street is it not john's face no, no john's, john's got, got, one, got one, too. one too they love it has claire got That's one as right. well so so i think is it God. it's not is it high street it's that one that goes up um, towards Denison, isn't it? It is the one that goes up to Denison. High Street? I think it's maybe High Street. Pass University. Yeah. Have you not seen it, Greg? I Tell must, have, I must have seen a photo on Facebook or something at one point, but yeah. I forgot. Goodness sake, man. I'll look out for it again <laughs> I'll, t- I'll take you up there because there's a few nice coffee shops. Oh, there. it's lovely. It's her and Eddie together. It's really cute. So, obviously, like the wedding collective is quite unique in the way that outward facingly, it's targeting couples, mm-hmm. but in the back end, it's also targeting suppliers yeah so when you're sort of looking at the outward facing stuff Mm -hmm. do you have a couple in mind that you're targeting or that you think the wedding collective's designed for Mm. yeah i wouldn't say yeah i wouldn't say it's one couple um because i think it's something we've been trying to work on as well as being as inclusive as possible um Mm. in terms of like changing our wording and you know not talking about like brides planning like it's always brides planning this and yeah. you know, like how our like our events used to be called bridal market and we mm-hmm. changed that just to the wedding market just so that we can kind of you know we just want to be a safe place like a friendly place for people to come to that they know that all the businesses that we work with are going to be really accepting and but in terms of style of weddings there's so many different kinds of weddings I think that people yeah that people have with suppliers from the wedding collective so yeah, I wouldn't just say there's one kind of couple, but it definitely is. It's someone who wants to do something to them that's completely like genuine and authentic to them as a couple. Um, something more modern, I guess, as well. Yeah, um, I've, I've... Le- less traditional. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. But then there are parts of like you know Scottish tradition that are really lovely, and there's a modern way to do that and stuff. So I kind of hate to like bash on the tradition thing because it's just mm-hmm. it's just people who are doing exactly what they want to do, and maybe something with a bit of a more modern aesthetic. I guess is yeah. kind of our key market. If if I'm thinking back, that's kind of always been the case, hasn't it? That you've always kind of gone after that kind of. Yeah, it's why it kind of started. Yeah. Yeah. It's because it used to be all about the vintage, Simon. Do you remember? <laughs> oh, yes, my we remember. Goodness. Everything vintage. was vintage. That that teacup, no, the, yeah. the, the China plate phase. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. my mm-hmm. goodness. Yeah. That's kind of that what was... the original vibe was, wasn't it? Oh, Love man. It. That was cracking. And then yeah. there was some When we used to do actually... um, Hillhead Boot Club, do you remember? We had like oh, our little events yes. there when we did our very, very first markets. I think there was like 11 suppliers, all teacups, <sighs> teacups and bunting. <laughs> yeah, and that's, the that's days. actually no joke. Yeah, there's no hyperbole here. That That is genuinely what it was like. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so. But yeah, it's always been that. I think it's always been that kind of market of, I hate to call it alternative as well. I don't know. It's just modern couples, <sighs> isn't it? I feel like alternative yeah. is now becoming mainstream, I think. Everything is, yeah. though. Mm. It's hard because like yeah. what used to be, you know, really unique is now like urban outfitters on the high street. You know, everyone's into like a hipster style or an unusual style now. So I think it's a bigger a market. Because yeah, it means definitely. that people are doing what they actually want and doing it more as a reflection of them rather than just like what people have done before them. Yeah, it kind of, I think it gives people the confidence to go forward yeah. and do stuff that they want to do when they see that other people mm-hmm. are doing something more unusual. Yeah, yeah and you're yeah. right about sort of not bashing on traditions because we've always said that we don't like the traditional stuff but if someone's doing it because it's true to them mm-hmm. and they really do want to do that yeah then we love that yeah, Makes yeah. Sense. i actually i actually love tradition like like the uk 
it's steeped in it yeah and so it's it, like, really unique i think for yeah. the uk yeah there's a, like there's a lot of kind of history steeped in stuff that we do and i guess it, it all kind of comes from as a supplier what you know what creatively inspires you mm-hmm. so you know it doesn't necessarily mean that like the aesthetic of a day might not be exactly what you want but maybe for you you love tradition and kind of the genuine relationships and where that comes from for their family and the couple and stuff and if that's your vibe mm-hmm. then cool go for it it just needs to be the right fit and like satisfying for you yeah mm-hmm. yeah so obviously we we talked about who the who the who the market who who the directory who the collective sorry <laughs> is aimed at <laughs> yeah hypothetically right hi, hypothetically mm-hmm. you have let's say 10 photographers right applying to be on the collective yeah what's gonna make that one supplier stand out above all the others in your eyes I'm sending a stuff through the post and no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> sending cake. Yeah, cake. Um, no, I think bribes, all oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Bribes. Mm. That's the way it works. Food, yeah. Money. Food, Hot food food bribes. <laughs> Ellie likes cinnamon buns, just so I you know. I love cinnamon buns. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think there's a couple of things. So I love it when a business has like a like it's confident in its its voice, its aesthetic, it feels professional. Because, you know, even though a lot of wedding businesses are, you know, maybe even a part-time business or kind of kitchen table businesses, I think you still need to be presenting yourself as like a really professional business. And Mm -hmm. it seems like trustworthy and authentic. So I think that's a big part of it for me is how, like, how how would the client view them? You know, Mm -hmm. is there is their branding really great? Is like the voice consistent across all their social media? Can you really quickly figure out exactly what they're about, what kind of work they would give you, what it would feel like to deal with them, you know, as a business? And then obviously there's also the side of the style of it. You know, I just think it's, it's, yeah, it's having a confidence in what you're doing and that being something that's a little bit different, you know, a little bit modern and especially now that we do have such a great group of suppliers, it, it is bringing something different at this point, especially mm-hmm. for photographers. Is it something we've not seen before? Is it something that is different from the photographers that we have on the collective at the moment? But yeah, I think, yeah, at the moment, it's kind of, a kind of a big part of it is feeling like it's a business that you would trust and that, you know, all these other businesses that are part of the wedding collective would be happy to recommend and, mm-hmm. you know, someone... Yeah. Because that's a big, I guess that's a big thing because it's representing everyone. The collective, or yeah. it's representing some, yeah, it's representing the whole collective, I suppose. Exactly. Yeah. If one person gives bad service, yeah. having been found from the collective, then it brings it all down. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. it really has to be a confidence in how this person's going to go about, you know, dealing with clients, you know, dealing with other suppliers. And that's a really huge part of it, actually, I think, as well as being brilliant and mega talented. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and also having yes. good photos huge yes that's a huge part of it because mm-hmm. this you know we <clears throat> offer people support on social we offer them blog posts our blog is open for people to basically um promo anything that they that they're doing give updates launch stuff um but we live in such a visual world that your stuff could be top top notch but if your photos aren't professional if they're not well lit if they're you know a tiny quality or whatever then we can't there's, there's only so much we can do um, so that's a massive thing as well is having a big portfolio of, um, you know, real weddings, real work, or at least a diverse range of style shoots that look like real weddings yeah. um, that we can then use to show show you off in your full glory. Yeah. And also yeah. sharing good content. I think that's so important. Yeah. You know, if like the more that um, members can give to us, you know, the more we can promote them. If they're creating their own unusual content, you know, we can then give them an extra platform to share that. So that's, mm-hmm. yeah, definitely get, like give a business that has something unusual that we can then be like pushing forward for them and maybe they're really great on instagram stories or they do loads of styled shoots or they're really good on twitter and we can repost them all the time you know so it's Mm -hmm. it's really something that we can use to help promote them as well as like a big bonus Uh uh-huh and that's obviously advice not only for photographers or filmmakers, right? Like, yeah, no, not at all. You gotta have this good content for you know being a a venue or a florist. Yeah, it's still such a it's something we come across quite a lot is people launching a business and, you know, investing in loads of other things, but still not photography. And, you know, one, one session mm-hmm. of photography for your business, if you invest in that, that can last for years, 
You know, if yeah. you're mm-hmm. yeah. a caterer or even if you're a florist, even though styles change, if you do something that's really simple, like a really clean, amazing aesthetic, and get great professional images that, you know, that will last for so long. You can get so much traction from that, from quite a small amount of investment. Uh-huh. So like yeah, totally. get good photos, people. Mm-hmm. It's so important. For all those people out there who aren't photographers, yeah. what's the best way for them to get good images? I think reaching out to photographers or, you know, mm-hmm. bringing groups of people together to do styled shoots. And yeah, I think really I would... Yeah, reach out to someone who's local to me, a photographer, and it's someone you want to have a good relationship with anyway, especially, you know, if you're in a wedding business and say you're a florist and there's like if another photographer that lives nearby and you want to create, create a good mutual relationship with them, but just investing in it, like it really, it's mm-hmm. like it's good photography isn't cheap, but the money that you'll get back tenfold for the investment of having great images to share is huge. So yeah, I think... And asking advice, you know, and getting setting something up in a studio and maybe get other suppliers on board and mm-hmm. kind of do a little shoot day together. So they have yeah, all these amazing cool. stuff to share. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Obviously, you mentioned the blog a minute ago. That's mm-hmm. a big part of the Wedding Collective. When you're sort of curating a feature, does it have to involve a member from the collective or do you post other stuff as well yeah totally anything really i mean it's anything that's gonna help promote a member of the wedding collective we're down for and also there are some yeah. things necessarily that are just like really great content that are going to be really inspiring you know it might be like about trends or ellie's the one who like does a lot of that kind of stuff so you should take yeah. this one out so what what yeah. makes a submission stand out in your eyes ellie um, I think one of the main things with, I mean, good photos, obviously, but we've discussed that, so that's boring to say again. Um, <laughs> having a story, I think, is super important. And I think that's the thing that lets a lot of styled shoots down or like product shoots. Um, having a story and just having it make sense, especially in the wedding world when you're trying to pretend it's a real wedding. Um, okay. It needs to have a certain flow to it and yeah makes sense sorry in, in talking about the story for a photographer mm. like obviously if you're doing like a feature you know you got to have those details so how do you incorporate a story then into uh, a blog feature yeah so that's a very good question um it, for product shots it kind of doesn't matter so much because you know with product shots it is quite clearly a product shoot mm-hmm. um, and yes. if you're doing a wedding shoot and you want to kind of focus on the details sorry chris has just walked and he's leering over my shoulder <laughs> Oh, no. I like that you came to me first instead of your wife. <laughs> I thought these are both up here. Um, I don't even know where Jill is. I, she's in the cave. I don't know where. Where are you, Jill? I'm downstairs. She's downstairs. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> she just said it on my own. <laughs> Chris just said, have you got walkie-talkies? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chris. You're so cute. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, Get that egg sandwich now. <laughs> oh shit yeah where's my sandwich i'm joking um um yeah so if you're doing if you're doing a wedding shoot i think in terms of the details it just makes sense if you've just not having them stand in awkward ways and just having them interact with stuff kind of show how things would be placed on the day so if you've got an invite you know put it on a place setting rather than um just randomly on the floor or something and um if you've got if you want to showcase a number of dresses um make sure you have different locations for the person to be in so that it's similar to a bride or groom having an outfit for the daytime and then one for the night time don't have them in the same situation wearing four or five different outfits because unless you're angling it as a fashion editorial shoot because no bride would wear or no bride or groom would wear four different outfits on the same thing really the kind of stuff like that just just thinking about how the viewer is going to see it and because you know essentially shoots are for couples to look at and see themselves in and you know it's an aspirational thing for their wedding so it needs to be cohesive and make sense i think yeah kind of like having a narrative isn't it? i think any, yeah, exactly. it's like any press you know you need a hook you need some kind of story or narrative to the like images if it's just pretty images there are a million yeah. of those like what's the hook for you know us being able to promote this or sell something from it yeah um, need the angle yeah and then this this isn't part of the submission but then after the submission and this goes for kind of any directories of blogs because i've also done writing for other kind of major wedding blogs as well making sure that all your links to suppliers are legit links and having a write-up that actually explains what the the story behind it was 
because you know as a writer you can see what's happening in the images or you should be able to but you don't know the inspiration behind it and there's always going to be little bits that happened on the day you know the same as uh, as an actual wedding there's always going to be stuff that happened on the day that you just can't tell from the images so having that background info makes a much better more uh, fuller like more the back story, isn't it? Yeah, the backstory exactly like and then you have that emotional pull towards it as well as having great images mm-hmm. yeah just out of curiosity which one is more likely to get featured like a styled shoot where someone's gone ahead and and you know it's it's a well-crafted shoot or a genuine wedding where it's obviously you, you know the amount of effort is still the same like w- w- which one appeals to you more um, if the shoots are good enough you can't really tell the difference <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, no, no exactly so mm-hmm. but is is there i don't think there's a pref like there isn't a preference uh-huh. like they're different they're different things for us they're different categories mm-hmm. that we do feature on the blog mm-hmm. you know one's kind of maybe more inspirational and one's more like the real lives are way more people are going to reference that for like who's that forest at that venue what's that venue like what's the photographer it's something they can actually get actual information from whereas the styled shoots it's just inspiration isn't it so yeah both mm-hmm. we want both so i guess i mean blogs are usually at the forefront of trends right so let's talk about them because i think it's trends are kind of a funny topic to co- kind of conversate because they've kind mm-hmm. of got a, a negative com- uh, connotation mm-hmm. but as well as a, a kind of a positive side so first off trends are you, are you for or against trends mm-hmm. <laughs> i i think it's difficult because as we you know we're branding ourselves as kind of like alternative for want of a better word wedding suppliers it's hard to then you know say be ahead of the trend and do what you want but also these trends look really good so it's a very difficult position to be in however it is the yeah. position i'm taking <laughs> so make, a, make of that what you will <laughs> um i like it i think it's something that it's something that inspires me like i still keep up with you know fashion trends and like do a lot of research into that style stuff when we're looking at inspiration for photography so i feel like yeah. creative couples are always going to be inspired by trends and especially because yeah. I think more and more people are trying to, like, whatever their everyday aesthetic is, you know, like, what, what does the interior of their house look like? What do they wear every day? Like, that's way more coming into how people style their weddings now. Like, it's not as, it's not as separated as it used to be. It used to be very much like, oh, it's your wedding day. You have to do this. Or you have to do that. People want to have way more, like, you know, if they're really into, like, a minimal kind of, you know, Scandi aesthetic at home, like, they're probably going to want to carry that across their wedding. So I think in terms of trends in that way, it's like, guys, I'm trying to do a podcast here. <laughs> guys, Chris, shush your face. <laughs> Where am I going to go? In the bathroom. Yeah, the, the bathroom is the middle ground. Go sit in the bedroom. Just eat your egg sandwich and stop chatting. Huh? <laughs> I don't feel awkward. <laughs> yeah, so I think that in terms of like saying like oh these are the trends that are happening it's way more it's just talking about gen- like i would only ever reference it talking about general trends that you see across lifestyle fashion everything also now apply to weddings more than ever mm-hmm. does that answer your question probably not yeah. yeah totally i suppose it all comes back to that as long as they're doing it and it's true to their self and it yeah. suits their style yeah then that's cool if, yeah. if they're doing something from a trend that makes sense for their style then that's totally cool exactly. ones, I think. and there's mm-hmm. so yeah. many there's so many people as well that we have to remember you know we we are kind of like we're creatives but there are a lot of people who do find that part of their wedding planning hard to like def- define down an aesthetic that they really like or you know to be able to say i kind of want it to feel like this or i like this image on pinterest but they don't really know how to like dissect that into making their wedding feel like that so some people do need more guidance but I don't know, I'm not really a big fan of things that are kind of like, you know, these trends are on their way down. Like, you know, like yeah. bashing bashing on trends, even though we just... L- like we bashed on Bunting in teacups. <laughs> I mean, it's almost 10 years ago. I think that's loud. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, like I'm not, I don't like it like that. But I think in terms of, yeah, trends can be helpful to guide some people into like, ah, okay, that's the style, that's what you call that kind of style that I've seen that I like, you know? So, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's good and it's bad. Do, do you have any favourites that you've experienced over over the years? Favourite trends? Yeah. Um, she loves teacups. Oh my God, I love teacups, <laughs> especially when they're turned into candles. Um, oh, yes. I don't know, I guess like the whole kind of minimal greenery thing 
is really lovely. That's a really beautiful um, kind of look and feel to photograph. Um, yeah. And I think it's quite timeless as well, which is really yeah. important, I think. Although saying that, I'm kind of like, if your, if your vibe right now was, you know, you're really like into loads of prints and like big old Gucci style stuff at the moment, like I kind of feel like have a wedding like that. Wouldn't it be amazing just to have this like really mad wedding that's very like represents you and your partner right now. And then in 10 years time, you'll look back and be like, we were so crazy. That dress is <laughs> mental. I would never wear it. But I love that. I'm mm. kind of like that too. So yeah, I like minimal, but also like loads of stuff as well. So does that, yeah. yeah. And when you're when you're sort of looking at the statistics for the blog, mm -hmm. is there any anything that's popping right now that you're posting that's sort of standing out as this is really drawn in? Ellie loves some a stat. Viewers? Ellie oh, loves me, our blog stats. Let me find so some stuff for you. Oh yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> I want to give you some up-to-date stats, you know? Up-to-date stats. Oh, up to -date absolutely. Stats. There are definitely some things, though, that you, like, if you put a post up on Instagram or whatever, and they just go wild, and you're just like, this is mad. Like, I don't know why it's this. Some people just really... <laughs> Do you know what, actually? One that we had recently, Ellie, which remember... Um, oh, my God, the Colin Ross up. one? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it was, um, it was Colin Ross who'd done a photograph of a couple in the rain, and... It was very oh, Scottish right. and kind of dramatic looking. Is that that big castle that I'm not going to embarrass myself by trying to pronounce? I think it was Elin Donan, maybe. Actually, the one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, or Il Anne Donan, as Ellie would call it. <laughs> um, and that was really popular. But then at the same time, we had one, and it was about. Uh, it was just a photo of some ramen noodles, and the couple had done like a ramen bar which as is their evening genius, snack. because all you need is a massive hot water urn, and then like yeah. it's ramen at forty p. Oh. How genius is that? And it kind of was really cute because they were all kind of all this like little um, cute Chinese packaging and and I think simple ideals like like that that are really something that people can kind of run with. Who wouldn't yeah. want a ramen bar? Like that's so genius. I want a ramen bar installed in my house. I want one right now. <laughs> um, so oh, I know stuff what like that. that. What was our top one? Was a Wed Wes Anderson themed wedding? Always. Uh, yeah. Okay. And then okay. Like, yeah, it's a timeless one. Yeah. Though. Wes Anderson. I don't know. If maybe generational with our group mm -hmm. of. Yeah. Generation. I think so. But, yeah, it's going to be... I wouldn't know, I'm a bit young. <laughs> ...in style for, <laughs> for a long time. Yeah, no, I agree. And I, I'm intrigued. Yeah. We, sorry, we, we see with the Wes Anderson statue, did the photographer change the way he shot to any kind of degree as well? Because obviously a lot Why of... Why are you saying it's a man? ...style. You're supposed so, to call them sorry. photographer persons now. Sorry, did the photographer person... <laughs> <laughs> Changed the way that person shot. Um, no, it was it was Shoot. actually a real it was a real wedding. Um, so they just had loads of Wes Anderson huh. style deets. So they had like Wes Anderson themed invites, and they had like fantastic mix okay. box cake okay. toppers and stuff. All right. So but it, I'm, I'm, it was quite whimsical. So it was like similar uh -huh. kind of vibe, but they didn't do like particularly Wes Anderson style esque shots. If that makes sense. Right. Okay. But that's mm -hmm. something else you can take like direct inspiration from as well, isn't it? Couples, something that's really visual that yeah. they yeah. can easily kind of. Be like, I love those colours. I like that style. And I also think flowers are a really good one because if you, you know, because there's that whole thing talking about trends, there's that whole tussle between wanting something really fresh and, and new. But then if you've got, you know, family members who are chipping in to pay, then they always feel like they kind of have a say potentially. And I think flowers are a really good middle ground where it is a very traditional wedding item, but you can make it really new. And so like you yeah. appease everyone that you want to appease in the planning process. Good yes. tip, Thank Ellie you. Kelly. <laughs> Is a good tip. <laughs> um, so to all of our creatives out there who are listening, you can take that tip and tell it to your couples and, and help them out with their planning. <laughs> Look at that. You, you've got to credit the way <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> have that one course, for free, guys. Don't course. you worry. <laughs> <laughs> what a treat for today's I know. Episode. What can I say? I'm in a benevolent <laughs> mood. No, I'm joking. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's what's sort of really popular just now on mm -hmm. the blog. Is there anything from the fashion industry or from anywhere that you see being popular in the next year to year two years? Cream. I feel like we're going. We're going to go all back to that cream. Yeah, that like really super creamy, eggshelly, lemony yep. kind of aesthetic. Do you not think, Ellie? Yeah. I think you're that on, you're going to see the fashion degree, mate. I don't know. <laughs> I think. Uh, yeah, I think that's definitely going to come back. Is what was seen as like a kind of a little bit 80s 
um, I and think in color like, palette, but also like volume and like puffy sleeves and stuff. And yeah, exactly. Like very on. Yeah, I can see that. I can see a lot of that happening. Also, I think accessories, um, like a bigger focus on accessories that aren't necessarily like traditionally wedding gi. So I think like yeah. a lot of brides are going to have, and grooms are going to have like handbags and stuff now um, because yeah, I think that's totally. where people are going more editorial with their wedding style regardless of what their actual wedding styling is like, if that makes sense. Yeah, like a whole kind of styled look. Yeah. I think people are way more aware. And that's like, that's got a lot to do with Instagram yeah. and stuff as well. I think it's that like look, isn't it? People really want to, have a refined aesthetic like top to bottom but yeah definitely I think you're gonna see a lot of creamy creamy stuff yellow loads of yellow stuff people are back into yellow I think that's gonna be a a big guy as well which is nice though I kind of like that fresher people kind of went for like the dark the dark side and now people are kind of coming back to a more kind of neutral and I think all the kind of eco stuff as well like that's just going to get more and more people are going to get more conscious about the waste that's involved in weddings yeah um how they're repurposing yeah. stuff and mm-hmm. you know um what they can be doing to minimize that we've actually i don't know whether it will be by the time that this podcast goes out but we've got a blog coming up on that by um carol yeah. from harper scott yeah yeah all right oh we'll have a good time. i know i love her she's lovely yeah, she's awesome <laughs> With Jack was designed from the ground up and is tailored specifically for creatives. Whether you provide a service like design, development or photography or offer advice to clients, With Jack is for you. It's focused on creatives. Insurance shouldn't be complicated, so With Jack has made every step easy. You'll deal with one form and talk to one Jack as you sign up, get covered and move on with your day. With Jack is all about bespoke insurance for creatives. Simple. That doesn't mean more forms or faff, it means less. It's not about endless features and stale service. It's about one solid policy and the personal touch. Bye bye, unnecessary fuss. Hello, creative friendly insurance. Be a confident creative. We were talking about trends, but I think we should move on. I want to talk about the Wedding Collective Fair. Uh... What we're we calling it these days? <laughs> yeah, so obviously it used to be called the bridal used show. Used to be called the bridal, bridal market. Well, bridal it actually market. used to be called the Glasgow Wedding Collective Vintage Wedding Fair. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. Ooh, that's a throwback. That was snappy. That was real snappy. <laughs> real snappy. I bet that, that was. That was Chris it was, idea, yeah, and it was also fair, spelt like F A Y R E, which actually yep. means yeah. food. Why? So great. That's my number one it, tip. Yeah, that's the difference, for, right? Uh, it yeah, it's food. like Brewer's Fair. You know, like, it's like you would have a big fair of medieval meat on your long wooden table, you know? I mean... it's <laughs> delightful. So now Ellie's on board and it. she's changed yeah. up the name to something yeah. way better. So we're just calling yeah. it the Wedding Collective Market yeah. now. Yeah. Nice. Slick, the inclusive. Yeah, it kind of covers all bases. Yes. Very cool. Yeah, so that was the big move for that. But... um. Yeah, so basically we just do them a couple of times a year. We always try and pop them up in really unusual venues, kind of venues that are fun to go to that might be an inspiring environment for a couple as well Mm -hmm. to kind of see, you know, Mm -hmm. wedding style things like um, style tables or like installations of florals and stuff in industrial venues. You know, sometimes there are a lot of couples that have never seen Mm -hmm. that kind of thing before. They're used to maybe the vibe of seeing it in a hotel or, you know, an exhibition center or something so yeah we always kind of try and use exciting spaces for it um i'm hoping to confirm mm-hmm. our next one today this afternoon um Ooh. which is going to be another late night kind of thursday thursday night in summer which i love it's always such a good vibe for those ones i feel like the music and food and it's kind of like makes it really laid back i think as well if it's a kind of evening market yeah um those are definitely yes. some of my favorite ones um but yeah, if you've not been to one before, they're, you know, we make them super friendly and, um, but yeah, kind of anti-salesy, you know, it's not about like standing and handing out a million leaflets and kind of, you know, being in your face and really pushing sales on people. It's just kind of genuine businesses that want to meet clients that they're excited to work with. Mm-hmm. So that's the whole kind of vibe of it. You guys have done loads of them. We yeah. have. Always bring we your have, A-game. Uh, styles, obviously. Yeah, we yeah. like to think so. Although most of the time our A, a game is uh, one of us mans the stall and the other goes and gets coffee. Yes. 
And if we can't <laughs> find coffee, we're just going to chat to yes. our suppliers mm-hmm. and really just um, ruin any potential business mm-hmm. that they potentially might be getting at that yeah. very point because yeah. we're talking to them <laughs> we're friendly but really we're just there for the there for the social really high-end competition yeah <laughs> yeah among mm-hmm. some people in the wedding industry wedding fairs yeah. markets sometimes get a bad Definitely. rep so what what's your approach obviously you've sort of touched on mm-hmm. keeping it different but how do you do that or why do you keep doing a wedding fair? Um, I think it's really important for suppliers to directly meet clients. It's such a huge marketing tool and amazing way to kind of put yourself out there. And so much of your business when you are a small business is you, especially when it comes to something as personal as weddings. You know, people are planning an event that they've never planned before. They want to meet someone that they trust. They feel is on the same wavelength as them. So I feel like it gives that opportunity that you just can't really get over, you know, email or phone calls or Skype or whatever, just to kind of meet someone and say like, this is my ideal client. This is my ideal supplier for my wedding. That face-to-face thing is so important, I think. So you need to keep keep doing these kinds of events to let that happen. And also for people to see in real life, you know, um, installations or anything that's kind of inspiring in sense of like the actual products that photographers have or you know, to be able to hold a bouquet, see the dresses in real life. And it's a time saver. It's a massive time saver for people planning weddings. If they can come and see a selection of businesses that would kind of be their kind of vibe anyway, it saves them hunting down loads of businesses, doing loads of separate meetings. If they can come to one place and meet everyone. And everyone's time short these days, you know. People don't have loads of time. They just want to sit and plan stuff on Instagram or do it like really easily. So we try and make that happen. In real life but yeah i think it's important these events still should be happening yeah they're always busy definitely the, the yeah markets. definitely they're always kind of you know got a good flow of people and and also like the right kind of client i think we've worked quite hard over the years to kind of try different things different timings and you know do we ticket the event do we make it a free event and um we've kind of just hit the formula where it works really well and it brings in you know a good amount of people but a good quality of people as well that kind of are um, genuinely interested in meeting suppliers and because sometimes if you have free events you kind of end up just having especially in the city centre people who are just nosy or you know just kind of want to see what's happening and or people come in really big groups of like 15 people trying to plan a wedding Um, whereas when it's ticketed it kind of keeps it concise and it works it really works at the moment I think so which is amazing yeah Mm -hmm. I mean I'm intrigued to to get your thoughts on how you approach the layout of mm-hmm. suppliers, you know, both to benefit, you know, yeah. the actual suppliers being there, but also the couples yeah. that are coming in. Because I, I guess I, if you think of a wedding fair, you think of, okay, you want, as a supplier, you want to be in a mm-hmm. certain area because you're thinking about the flow of the people yeah. coming around. And, you know, there's obviously like hot mm-hmm. spots and, and, and cooler spots where people don't tend to linger. So what's what's your thoughts on the actual practicalities of it? It's actually, um, it's something that we can, we can never figure out in advance. We always kind of think, you know, like, oh, like this, like if we lay it like this, you know, this is going to be really good here. And like, let's go here because these guys don't have as much, um, don't need as much room to like display out. You know, some people have big rails or whatever. But no matter what we mm-hmm. think, is like we've got it figured out in our head it's never it never runs like that on the day so you know some spots are more popular than others some will be really busy some would be like slightly quieter and like like you said temperature wise lighting wise you can just never predict what's going to be a good spot versus a bad spot but I feel like the kind of Mm -hmm. spaces that we have you know we always have loads of room for people and I feel like aesthetically everything really looks great and it really is a lot of it is up to how the suppliers use their spaces or how are they like attracting people Mm -hmm. you know a lot of the times just standing behind a table isn't really going to draw people to your stall because that's quite intimidating whereas if you have something that's more they can come and explore themselves that's more like inclusive of people Mm -hmm. they can go in and kind of like try things on or see for themselves and then you can be there to answer questions you know installations are really popular i think that people get a lot of business from that because they're allowed to explore it themselves and then, you know, discover who the work was from. Mm 
Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah, so it's one of those things that we kind of we lay it out, and then we always end up having to relay it out once everyone's there anyway to kind of rejig everything. Um, <laughs> but we always yeah. say as well to like people that are coming to the markets, the suppliers that you know if you want to do something different, you know we like we are all for it. Um, you know we always want to work with people to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's going to look amazing and make the market look really cool or be really interactive. So, mm-hmm. yeah, we've throughout the years we've done yeah. some different things. Like to you try mentioned, and the coffee, keep and it stuff. exciting. It like, great. yeah, yeah, brought a, brought a barista Big along hit. with his. I did some homebrew once. Yeah, brought that exactly. along to hand out. Yeah, yeah. So, mm-hmm. what you must have seen a lot of mm-hmm. stalls or setups in your time. So, what do you think makes a good setup that? A that does draw people think, in and gets the conversation Yeah, I think going. that it's got to be something um, that's actually quite simple in its message. You know, it can be really overwhelming for people coming to these kind of events where every, you know, every stall is different and it's different businesses, different styles, and it can be like a lot of information at once. So if you're really clear yeah. in what you do and, you know, what your style is. So like, you know, if you're a photographer, maybe that's just a couple of really big prints and then some like nice styling that kind of gives your vibe like that's going to very instantly people are going to understand exactly what you do and because yeah I think that could be quite intimidating especially as more businesses become you know more kind of convoluted in what they offer that can be confusing for people yeah. so just be like a really simple mm-hmm. striking that's maybe actually one critique of when we brought our friend along to do the coffee yeah. is that people started to talk to her and be like oh so is this yeah do, you do this at weddings and we're like no it, it's yeah, us that do yeah, wedding yeah. films that, yeah that you're here yeah, to talk so, to mm. and mean, it doesn't... went down well but it, it did cause a wee yeah. bit of confusion but yeah. that broke the ice totally least. yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it did it, yeah it, it brought hundreds of people yeah. to our store because i think on that day i don't know if but like, usually i think there's someone catering yeah. for the coffee right yeah usually mm-hmm. uh whether or not they're yeah. serving i'm not too sure uh but on that occasion there wasn't a if I recall yeah it was right, an like, evening one so I think we only had a bar yeah yeah, yeah. So, so it really did bring like yeah. everyone yeah. over to our store and uh yeah there was a bit of confusion actually but then you know you engage in conversation and it's you know that's where you can I don't want to say no, this but like talk, cause... let people know about your work <laughs> but yeah engage yeah, exactly that's all you yeah, want to do is yeah. really just kind of let people know mm-hmm. that you're out there um that you're available for them and you know this is what we're all about mm-hmm. And then I guess it's whether that fits yeah. with them. It's kind of. Uh-huh. I mean, so I I do mm-hmm. want to say, uh, if for people listening, if you're thinking about doing something a little bit different for your wedding stall, definitely double check that it's okay to do so. Because there was one year I think we like Greg was into his home brewing, and we we put our information and <clears throat> we bottled this beer. Um, however. Technically, you guys were running oh, a bar yeah. at the same time. <laughs> Licensing. Um, and then again, mm. there was that time that that we had a... Well, we, we weren't were selling. It, as a yeah. gift it was giving it home. as a gift. So yeah. legally, it was fine. And then obviously that time we had the coffee. If there was another coffee supplier, we would yeah. technically be kind of, you know, stepping totally. on their feet. So just, just be careful yeah. about... Yeah, I think it's, know, just, it's um, just that thing that's always all about communication, isn't it? I think you... Yeah. You know, we want it, but we love to hear from suppliers what their plans are for the market. Like a lot of people don't really know until mm. like much later in the day. But if you can pre-plan early and say like, we've had this idea, you know, we want to do this thing, you know, we can help make that happen. And, you know, even if mm-hmm. talking about it in like the Facebook group with the other wedding collective suppliers, you know, maybe people want to collaborate on it. And it really is a great way to get to do something different and to make the most of it. But yeah, I guess it's just letting us know mm. what's happening is a big yes to make things feel kind of easy and smooth yeah always open yeah. to people doing stuff that's different so we kind of touched upon this a little bit earlier but we and we've obviously asked you about the difficulties that you face about starting the collective but in terms of like yeah so in talking about markets what's the what's, what's the difficulties there i feel like we kind of i feel like we kind of have it pretty down with how we do things um a lot mm-hmm. of it is just the logistics of because we bring in our own wall partitions um which are, obviously that's like a complete setup that we have to do um yeah. that's probably mm-hmm. the biggest kind of thing to make sure that's all organized and i think it's just always these things when you're um you're really relying on other 
people to help make that happen. Like we have our van guys who help load that and they set up and they've done that for a couple of years for us. So we really rely on them to be, you know, on time and efficient to make things really easy. Um, But I feel like everything actually is pretty smooth and and good with the markets Um, because people kind of know know what the deal is and we try and communicate as much as possible to let Mm -hmm. people kind of know what's what one of our things that we do struggle with is obviously the um industrial spaces come with their own challenges in terms of lighting yes and heating and stuff like that so it's kind of just always trying to strike that balance between you kind of always have to Mm -hmm. compromise somewhere because those style Mm -hmm. of spaces are obviously in quite short supply as well yes and within a budget that we can kind of afford that makes it affordable for suppliers and, you know, a great event for people to attend as well. So, yeah, mm-hmm. kind of the challenges of that. But, yeah, apart from that, I think it's anything just dealing with um, members of the public. You're always going to have cert- certain situations, but that's just something that kind of comes with <laughs> being a ticketed event and we kind of just always try and yeah. give the best customer service we can mm-hmm. to the people that are attending the events and that's all you can do there's only mm-hmm. so much you can do in terms of putting in the hard work and um trying to make it yeah. the best you possibly can with the experience that you have and the knowledge that you have mm-hmm. um and i think we do a yeah. pretty good job of it so yeah well f- from our end definitely i mean we've we've been to many of the shows and we've seen the struggles that you guys have faced um you know whether that be in a you know toilets that aren't working yeah, or the heating fun. or fun. you know the, like the electricity yeah, even, that, yeah that was a know, fun one and you're you're yeah you're very quick to to get on the ball and and you know divvy out roles to people and and get any problem that's ever come across your way you know sorted yeah in, in good time yeah totally i think um, um i just like to get stuff done like things to be mm-hmm. running well and efficiently, people to be happy, and yeah. yeah. And when you've got Chris there, it's great because you can just be like, Chris, go and sort this stuff, you know? Well, it's handy. <laughs> he seems to be the the most unplanned, uh, uncontrolled um, element of any market. <laughs> it's just him running around like a headless tur- turkey. I feel like, like what we're doing? What you we're doing? and him together both fit into that category, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Would you well, agree, Greg? You know, if if I. <laughs> <laughs> you, and, you and me are the organized mm-hmm, ones, hundred mm-hmm. percent. Per, perhaps. I mean, well, did oh, I, I should say this because it is my fault. The last wedding fair, in fact, this probably paints Greg in a bad light. The last wedding fair that we we actually did, yeah. it was actually just me. I don't know if you remember this. But it was in the engine works, mm-hmm. and I brought our Mac computer that's actually yeah. behind us. Um, and I was packing up stuff and building shelves and putting stuff together. Um, but at the end, when we were derigging stuff somehow i managed to crack a good dent yeah. in the mac screen and greg was actually just about to sell that nice. mac and now we we and now we keep it um so yeah that, but do you know where greg was he was on holiday that's what you get so greg for going on holiday it's his fault it's fault. that's right you don't yeah. leave the uncontrolled element to run the business all right greg um but yeah so for people who have you know they're new to a business mm-hmm. they're setting yeah. up um a stall at yeah. a wedding fair and obviously not just your market even though it's amazing but like any kind of person setting up yeah. first time what advice would you give them like things to bring things to maybe think of beforehand. Um, i guess so the things we talked about before in terms of how you want your stall to look making sure your message is really kind of clear simple um engaging thinking about it from a kind of visitor's point of view um you know what would they what would you like to see um you know what kind of experience would you want to have what would you want to come away with um from it and then just being organized and actually just doing a mock-up I think is one of the best things you can do is you know mapping out the kind of space you're going to have at home figuring out exactly where you want to put stuff you know taking a photo of it um just so it's as simple as possible when you get there just to set up you know Mm. A lot of people will come and kind of, you know, maybe come really early, you know, have some breakfast, get like all set up, like go away, get changed, you know, and kind of, so they feel like really like fresh and ready to kind of go to talk mm-hmm. to people. Use use the things that are there to be used, like goodie bags, you know, like that's a huge yeah. thing. You're literally giving a hundred, you're giving something to a hundred people that are going to take home, have it in their house, have it on their coffee table or whatever. So I think that's a kind of underutilized avenue. Um, for people you know flyers 
nice business cards make sure you go and speak to other suppliers mm-hmm. as well you know it's a really great chance to introduce people introduce yourself to people and kind of say you know i've seen your work mm-hmm. on instagram you know i saw that wedding you did or you know kind of get to know your your fellow suppliers because that's the networking that's going to really you know strengthen your business as well but yeah yeah i think i think a lot of people don't think yeah. about that like this is a networking opportunity yeah, not absolutely. just for you guys to meet clients but other suppliers and that's that that's a really important yeah, part totally. of and you want to like kind of you know who hang out and hook up with people who are the same who got the same aesthetic as you who have the same clients who are like mm-hmm. your target market you know because you want to work with those people to mm-hmm. kind of make sure that you're doing work that yeah i guess is creatively satisfying for you so yeah but i think mm-hmm. a big thing is thinking about it from the point of view of a visitor what can i do that's different yep. and being organized yeah Definitely. So definitely. so far. Oh, hang, hang on, hang on. I've got to add. I've got to add stuff, right? In terms of like putting up your shelves and stuff, things to remember: yes. extension mm-hmm. cables, um, a yeah. little toolbox, very handy. Nails, yeah. hammer. You have that little uh, list. Things yeah, for that cutting. Yeah, to everyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you're actually yeah. very good at that. But... Yeah, and print that yeah. list out. Like the ones in Glasgow. You know? Richard Richard Ulf, he's usually good with having exactly. a hammer or stuff. Yes, you can usually yeah. go along to his store and be like. And it's kind of like that. anything you <laughs> yes. think that you might need, bring. Yes. Step yeah. ladder, yeah, 100%, 100%. bring a step ladder. Bring snacks, you know, totally. Sometimes, you know, urban places exactly. don't always have... Bring a rug. Around I or, love a rug. I think yeah. a rug looks great and really defines yeah, a nice. space as well. <laughs> yes. But yeah, we kind of have all the images from the last fairs as well. We do like the blogging and stuff so people can reference that. The fairs so mm-hmm. far, the fairs so far have all been mm-hmm. Glasgow, Edinburgh, yeah. sort of Scotland. Is there any plans and works now that the collective is UK wide yeah. for I, other cities? Not at the moment in the same avenue. Um, we might look at doing other events that aren't necessarily the kind of setup that we have in Glasgow. Um, just purely yeah. because it's kind of like a, a space kind of budget thing. Like we don't really want to get into the way of having to like charge supplier loads of money and like making it this kind of big big thing it's so fancy down here in london you know so i think that also yeah. there's a big <laughs> kind of gap in the market for events that don't feel as salesy you know that maybe aren't the kind of traditional setup it's kind of more inclusive yeah. um so there's some things i've been thinking about kind of doing down here but cool top i'm secret. intrigued to see top what you've secret. got in the works yeah <laughs> Yeah. You can tell us off here. I'll text you. <laughs> <laughs> Will Ellie be helping at the next? Uh, so Ellie market? is our blog gal. She kind of does all our blog and website mm-hmm. stuff. But she kind of does, you know, creative work for a lot of other wedding businesses as well. Um, So she's kind of, yeah, just exclusively does blog and website and kind of admin stuff for her. And then I kind of do mm-hmm. the market yeah. side of things. And I was trying to get Claire yeah. to get involved with the markets, but her pizza is just too good. So she's just not interested. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I kind of do the market things. That's kind of my jam, though, doing event stuff. Like, I love planning events and stuff. So, yeah, I'm mm-hmm. happy to keep doing those. All right. Okay. So we're not going to be seeing Ellie anytime oh, soon. I might, still, I might still come up for drinks, yeah. which is what I did last time. She'll pop in. I'm a, I'm a, bene- oh. I'm a benevolent soul like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just come up for the socials. <laughs> socials and the pizza. That's it. Socials and the pizza, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, we hope to see you. Well, it would be nice to see you too. Well, mm-hmm. how wholesome. Uh, but yeah, cool. Well, thank you for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having us. And thank t- you. Chatting, chatting, both of you. We managed uh, to make it work yeah. across the boundaries of <laughs> Scotland, England. Through yes. all the technical yeah. glitches. We had some te- technical <laughs> issues. And, I'm still waiting yeah. for my egg sandwich. Through Bertie though. snoring. Oh, I'll be freezing God. now. He's going to have to go and get fresh ones, Ellie. I think so. But before yeah. we go, let us know social handles that people can find you guys at. Hey, Ali, yes. you go first. You've got the most. Oh, I see. We were just doing wedding collective <laughs> ones. It's not a competition. You what? We're not just doing wedding collective ones. Where, where no, do you want um, people to go? I mean, ideally. Give ideally, <laughs> yeah. So our wedding collective one is just we are the wedding collective on Instagram where we're sharing loads of great content, actually. It's a very, very good at the Ag- moment. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, some really good stuff on there, guys. Yeah, it's actually quite good. <laughs> you sound surprised. Um, and we've got swipey swipe ups. So we've got we're loving those. Guys. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I know. Ooh. Hallowed ground. Um, yeah, so that's where you should find us both. And then separately, I'm um, at the wedding enthusiast 
and at theenthusiast.co. And I guess I'm at thecurries.co as well. May as well throw that in. Yeah, I'm just... Yeah, some yeah, average photos. Yeah, some like... <laughs> you're not you know, sure. Average right. photos, <laughs> but great chat from Chris. Then you should head to thecurries.co. Yes. Yeah, Chris loves an enthusiastic DM. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's what you get off the curries. Mm. <laughs> yeah he read all of all of his messages read like um uh buddy from elf <laughs> oh my god <laughs> it's not inaccurate it's not uh, inaccurate. it's not it's true <laughs> yeah. no that does sound like a good in a good way obviously mm-hmm. it's enjoyable that's yeah, how you can tell that. who you're speaking Youthful at wonderment. on dm yeah because jill's is like one word <laughs> one word with a full star <laughs> yeah yeah and chris is like oh santa i know him <laughs> this is the balance you were talking about guys right you gotta go yeah. yin and yang <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Cool. Uh, cool. Well, we'll let you guys go. Thanks again cool. for taking no the time problem. out. Speak soon. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did, hit that subscribe button so you know when the next episode goes online. Please leave a review. That is a massive help in order to grow the podcast. In fact, you'll notice that we haven't been doing a review shout out because we ran out of reviews. We've done so many episodes but we need some more reviews, people. So if you go and leave one now, you could be in the next episode. Oh my goodness. That's like really exciting. If you don't want to leave a review, totally cool with us. Keep listening. Maybe you can tell a friend. However, until next time, enjoy your life, people.